Lydia Sobieska, the Polish Prime Minister. She's regarded as a really strong character in this current meta. She looks to be pretty complex with all of her stances, but when you break her down, she's actually quite simple. She has some of the best punishments, some of the best neutral tools in the game, so definitely a very viable character at the moment. As usual with these tutorials, I'm going to include a combo document in the pins comments in the section below. So have a look at that if you want combos, because I don't want to like make the video too long with combos as well. So let's get right into our moveset. So let's talk about her moveset now. So to start with, let's talk about her jab. So her jab has a pretty good hitbox. It has good reach. It has good follow-ups as well. So she has a 1-2-3, two, which is a safe high. She has 1-2-2, two, two, which is her 10th frame. It goes into a stance. The last hit's a mid. She also has 1-2-4, which is a low ender. And on Kandrish, if they press, she gets a free follow-up into the 4-4-3. Four, four, if they try to punish the low, they'll get launched by the last hit, which is a normal hit launcher. So her chop strings are pretty good. So you can bully them at 1 2. If they try to take their turn, you can do one of these follow ups and then counter hit them and then, you know, encourage them to not disrupt the lady as a 1 2 frame advantage. So work away with that. Another one is um, 1 1. So 1 1 is. It's a jab into a 1-1, one, one, right? It's a it's another 10 frame punish. You can throw that neutral as well, it's plus five. On counter hit, the second hit is a counter hit launcher. So that means, uh, you, you know, you get a big reward. It is unsafe on block though, at minus 11, but minus 11 is nothing for like a chance to like counter hit them with a full launcher. So that she also has that. She has one four as well as a natural high poke. This is good if you, if you want a little bit of damage as a poke. You can drop the high, but that's when one one comes in. So you can use you can alternate you can alternate them and then pressure the opponent with them. Another string is two four. Two four is pretty spammable. It's ten frame. It's plus eight. It's natural. The opponents unblock. The opponents can't do anything to interrupt. They can't power crush. They can't um, press the button in between or step it. So it's a pretty spammable move. I believe they can Subaki and parryish, but. Against most characters, you can abuse it. Uh, a little bit of pushback on block as well, so you can still like move away and fish for counter it, fish for um, baits. So yeah, that's another move you can use. Another move is Demport One. Now Demport One by itself is not amazing because it's minus five, and it's the tracking is not um, great on it. However, she does have a a natural high follow up with Demport One Two, and she also has like a Brian Demport Two Three where she has a different one three which is a mid follow-up it's natural on counter hit only on counter not normal hit and the second it's a counter launcher which discourages them from pressing into Denford one so because it is minus five on block but you can scare them with the follow-ups to have a little bit of mental frame advantage to scare them from pressing another move is four for two now this move is like maybe Lydia's best move why it's so good is because it's fast at 13 frame plus the forward forward input. So it's pretty fast. On block, it is only minus two on block. On hit, it goes into a stance. I'll talk about stance and stuff in another section coming up in this video. So let's ignore that for now. But it's pretty busy. You can use it to approach the opponent. You can use it to, as a keep at move, you know, to try to approach you. Just nail them with the 4 4 2 and then back off. You can, uh, and on block, because it's only minus two, you can still do stuff. You can still counter hit them afterwards if they try something slower, or if they whiff something, you can use the push back to backdash and force a whiff and whip punish them. So, 4 for 2, super abusable. Another move that Lady has is really good is running one. Running one is a plus on block high that gives a really beefy follow up. And on block, it's plus seven. Now, there's a little bit of pushback on block. However, if you're at the wall, if you're at the wall, there's no pushback, right? Plus seven in their face at the wall. So it's very, very scary. So when they're looking to duck the running one, because the tracking is surprisingly good on running one. And if, especially if you delay the running one, it will track better. So when you're looking to duck the running one, you can start hitting them with 442. So you can get an idea of Lydia's neutral right now, right? So they're looking to duck the running one, you start hitting them with mids. Another mid that you can use as well is Dumper 2. Dumper 2 is nice because it goes into a scarier stance. 
Now it's not... 442 is better for like range and tracking and pushback, but Dumper 2 is better for like offense, like because the stance it goes into is a lot scarier. Again, I'll talk about it more on counter hit. You get a free follow up into um, flip over. If you want more damaging follow up, you can um, press the one for a little bit more damage. But personally, I prefer to flip over in the second stance, so you can run up and still do things. So yeah, down for two is another good move. Both moves are pretty hard to whip punish. Four for two, and down for two can be pretty tricky to whip punish. So even if you whiff them, if the opponent's not ready, it can be difficult to punish. Another move I want to talk about is four for down for four. Down for four is a 15 frame mid poke minus four on block. However, it does have extensions, so it has a plus one on block extension that's a high. It has a mid extension that's minus ten. And both these, both of these are natural on counter hit, and it's a lot scarier at the wall because both options wall splat. So it's really scary for them to duck into the mids because it wall splats, right? So this is where the high can become more useful because you can use the frames afterwards to pressure them, and when they start ducking, you can catch them with the mids. So it's it, 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 the reward of it boosts up a lot at the wall for sure. Another move is forward one plus two. Now, forward one plus two is another big, big key move for Lydia because um, it's 14 frame startup. It has a lot of range, has really good tracking, but also it's very hard to whip punish. So if you whiff the first few hits, it can be pretty difficult to whip punish because the follow ups are pretty fast, right? And also it can be hit confirmed. So you want to throw out the first two hits because it's safe on block. And then if you see a hit, you, you press the rest of the string, the 3, 1 plus 2, you press the rest of the string for like a lot of damage. Like this is a lot of damage for something hit confirmable, fast and huge range, right? So definitely abuse this move and especially good as a whip punisher as well. Now, Danforth 1 plus 2 is a punch Tsubaki. Now, if you have a read against a punch, this is what you can use. So Hayashi is a good example. So let's say Hayashi does 1 back 2, right? So you can... So it does 50 damage into into some Oki. So and it's safe on block as well. Minus it's only minus two. So you can still do a lot at minus two. So yeah, it's a very good uh punch Tsubaki option. If and especially if you read like a rage drive, like an Oscar rage drive or you know these similar rage drives like like a Prochi with a punch. If you get rage, you can get really big reward on the on the rage drive with the punch Tsubaki. Another move is Dem 1. Dem 1 is good because it's pl it's plus on block. It forces them in crouch, and on hit, it's plus 8, which is a lot, right? And this is especially good because the move I'm going to talk about soon is the Hell Sweep. So they can't backdash away from the Hell Sweep after Dem 1 on hit. Most characters can't. I believe, I don't know if at least that's the I can, but most of the cast definitely can't anyway. So Dem 1 is a pretty good situation, pretty good move to use in like OK situations and pressure situations. Like if your opponent's respecting you, you can use this. If they, if they tech roll, you can just kind of do it, and you know, if they block it, you have some plus frames. If they eat it, you get some damage and even more plus frames. So it's a pretty good move to use for pressure. Dem now let's talk about her lows, right? We talk about her mids, now let's talk about her lows. Her main low poke for me is Damaktu. Damaktu because it high crushes, it tracks both ways. On counter, she gets a free FC mix-up. So yeah, this move is... It, now, it is unsafe at minus 14, so be careful with it in some matchups, especially characters that can launch 13 and 14. But it is kind of like a must use low poke for Lydia because, it, like I said, really good range, good tracking, and a high crush. And it's relatively fast at 18 frame for this kind of low. So, yeah, definitely a must use for Lydia. <clears throat> but if you want a, a safer low option that's plus on block, you can do Denmark 4. Now, Denmark 4 is slower and it doesn't high crush compared to Denmark 2, but it's more used for pressure and more used for okay situations. So, if they get up and you don't want to commit too much, you can go for Denmark 4. And it does more damage as well. So, yeah, Denmark 4 is what, what you would use. And then on Kenda Hit, she gets a free 4 for 3 afterwards. Now, let's talk about D Hell Sweep, right? Like, this is D Hell Sweep. Now, her Hell Sweep is strong because. You can so the follow-up is an extension, right? So it's Denmark 3-2. However, if you're not in clean hit range, 
the follow-up doesn't ca doesn't come out. So it's kind of like an option select. So you can just always do the input. You can always do the follow-up. Now this is really strong because there is no commitment to it. Apart from if they block the lower course, right? But you don't need to worry about spacing. And it, do it does a lot of damage on, look, 30 37 damage. And it's 16 frames startup as well. So it's quite fast. This is going to be your main low. Just in, just in general, like when you're playing Lady at this is going to be like your main low option, like as a big mix up low. Now, the okay situations afterwards it goes something like this. If they stay on the ground, you can do the low Sibaki with Denmark 3 plus 4 to hit ground it. If they do mid up kick, get up mid kick, you can block and then punish it with 4 2 4, which is pretty scary. If they do low get up kick, the low Sibaki also covers the, the low option as well. So it's a pretty, pretty good okay situation for Lydia. Another move is back 2 1. Back 2 1 is good because it's a 13 frame high strain that's natural. And if they start ducking the back, the back 2 1, which is a duckable high, you can start doing back 2 3, which is safe on block. It tracks really well. It's natural on counter hit. The back 2 1 is natural. But back 2 3 is only natural on counter. However, if they press after back 2, you get a follow up with a, with a combo. So it can be pretty scary for them to challenge the back two. So back two, three especially is pretty abusable in my opinion. Now let's talk about back four. Back four is, I think, her only homey move outside of stances. So if you have a re if you think your opponent's gonna step or sidewalk, you'll use back four to like kind of keep them in check. And if you have a really good read that they're gonna step, you can finish the string for like 54 damage or free follow up or four for three. It is risky though because. It is a stagger low, but if you have to read and you're pretty confident, you know, you can finish it and go for more damage. Another move is hop kick, her up forward forward. Now, her, her hop kick is a bit unique in the sense that it automatically goes into a stance on hit. So you would use it as, you know, as generic as a hop kick can be. You would use it as a panic move. You would use it as a whip punisher. You use it as a block punisher. You use it if your opponent's like overextending under pressure or, or if they're going for lows. So like a general panic move. So Lydia's hop kick is no different. It just looks different, but it's no different to other hop kicks. Another move I like is Sicep 2. Sicep 2 is good because it's serum block. It forces them in crouch. On hit, you're plus five. On counter hit, you get free follow-ups. You get free follow-ups. So Sicep 2 is definitely good. It's good to approach with. It's good to start your pressure. So you're like, you're doing your running one pressure. You're doing your running one pressure or whatever. And then you can approach with Sicep 2, you know, something like this. Another move is Sicep 4. Sicep 4 is a launcher at a step. However, it is really, really difficult to whip punish. Even if you're ready for it, it can be quite difficult to whip punish. So. It's a beautiful launcher as step that can really throw off your opponent if they're not looking out for it. So let's talk about her crouching game. You know, this is my favorite part of the character, it's their FC game. Now Lydia has a decent one because um, her main low option is for that FC down for three. So you want to use this as a low option. So what it does, um, if they stay on the ground, you get three, four, four, three. If they back roll at, at, at the right ranges, so if they back roll, you, you relaunch them. It's a back roll catch, right? If they side roll, this is one answer. This is how you beat the, the mix up. So if, if you side roll, it whiffs, right? But if you delay your 4 for 3 you can catch them in the back for more damage and more pressure, right? And, and a combo starter. So it's a it's a kind of a mix up between immediate 4 for 3 or delay 4 for 3 Now just be careful because at range, the 4 for 3 won't reach at all in any direction, so be careful of that. At the wall, it becomes a lot scarier because you get free FC down for 3 afterwards, like always, no matter what. So I don't think they can escape this sequence, so you get another free FC down for 3. So what are your what are your um, options to um, mix this up with? So you, you have that low, but you also have while standing 1. So while standing 1 is a 13 frame mid from crouch. You have while standing 1, 2, which is a natural mid high is you know it's the classic like mid into safe high and then she has a mid into unsafe mid which is a wall split option so you can see her ft game gets a lot stronger at the wall 
because this wall spots for like a pretty beefy combo. So if they're it, so it's kind of like a layered mix up. If they're okay, so they guess right on the mid, but now they have to guess between the mid or high. Like, do they want to just block and block the safe high, or do you want to try and duck the high? Okay, they ducked into the mid, so it's a, it's a it's a canned mix up in a mix up in itself. Do you know what I mean? So another option that she has is if you're really feeling yourself in a mix-up situation, you can do while standing two as well. So while standing two is obviously unsafe, right? At minus 12. It's not that unsafe for a while standing launcher. Typically they're minus 13, 14, but this hers is minus 12. And um she can uh, you know it's a more reward. So if you're feeling yourself, you can get more reward out of the while standing two compared to the while standing one options. Another option you have is while standing three, two. Now this is more if you're feeling yourself because it is minus 13 on block, so a little bit more unsafe. But near the wall, you get more rewarding combo. Or whatever, right? I'm not being optimal here, but you know what I mean. So you get more rewarding option near the wall with while saying 3-2 if you want to use this in a crazy mix-up. So yeah, so next section I'll talk about stances, so let's get into it. <laughs> So let's get into her stances now. They're not as complicated as they look because she only needs to use like a few of them and she only needs to use a few moves out of them as well. So they're not that complicated, but let's get into it. So the first stance is cat foot one, which is abbreviated as CFO. It's done by doing four one plus three or four three plus four. Now the move that goes into this the most is four for two, right? So four for two is the main move that goes into it. So let's talk about the options out of it. So four for two into the cat foot one is a plus four on block high. You will use this if they try to rage out or if they try to press a button or move afterwards. So if they move, press the button that doesn't high crush or if they press rage out, this will, ca this will catch them. And also it's plus four on block so you can still continue pressure afterwards. If if they try to interrupt with a non, if they try to interrupt or if they try to duck, you can do um, cat foot two, which is a minus 10 mid on counter hit is a launcher on counter hit. So you use this especially after raise drive on block. If they try to press anything, this will keep them honest, right? This will keep them and stop them from moving and stop them from pressing. It can be parries by one or two frames start up parries. But um, other than that, you can't do it. You can't do anything but the two. So that's when you would use it. Another move is um half foot three. Now, this one isn't that useful. I personally wouldn't use this compared to the one. So I would just ignore this move. I don't think there's any use for the three. Now cat foot one four is another move that's pretty good because it's if it's your main option out of four for two, right? So if you don't want to commit to an option, you can do this, right? So they can interrupt it and that's when this will come in use or that's when this will come in use right to stop them from moving stop them from pressing if they're if they are just respecting you then th you would use this right this you would use this so um and if you don't want to commit to anything at all because like all these options can be beaten right like the two can be punished these can, these can be interrupted right so if you don't want to commit to anything you can hold back and kind of reset to neutral and most characters can punish this without rage so you can use that Okay, let's talk about the Garth Briggs stance, the Heaven and Earth stance. So you would act now. This move is kind of hard to access. It's kind of hard to get into versus stronger players because it is reactable. Like she, 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 she changes her hands, right? So it's pretty like telegraphed. But what you can do is you can do okay situations, for example, into it, right? If they t you can force them to tech roll into it in certain okay situations, or you can heavily condition them into respecting this, for example. So let's talk about the options out of it. So Heaven and Earth 1 is a mid launcher that's safe on block, right? So so that's your safe mid, mid launcher out of it. Heaven and Earth, okay, let me turn on. This is, a, this is the important part, right? So Heaven and Earth 1 plus 2 is a guard break. So you have plus 14 to work with. So that means you can do free political storm, or if you're at the wall, you can do 424 to uh, wall splat them. So that's not one option you can do. Another option you have is Heaven and Earth 2. If they try to interrupt Heaven and Earth with something that's a high, like a magic 4 or a jab string or something like that, you can use the 2 
to interrupt that, to counter hit them and to go under, to high crush under. Better players will know to do like a mid to interrupt down a nurse, but in case they're doing a high, you have this as an option. So let's talk about um, cat foot stance. So cat, cat foot stance is this. So it's done by back three plus four. So what you would do in this, so this stance will be accessed by one, two, two, and down for two. So in my opinion, this is her most accessible stance and her scariest stance, right? Because it, it happens very often. So your options out of this would be, so for example, if you do one, two, two, as a 10 frame punish into it, you can do the one, the cat foot one, which is a minus nine mid. It can be interrupted with 10 frame and it can be stepped. However, you have options to stop this. If they try to step, or if they try to press something that doesn't high crush, you can do um, the two, three out of the stance. So if they try to press something, or if they try to move, this will interrupt them and keep them honest. Another option you have is into the three, right? Into the stance three. This is good because if they try to step, or if they try to rage art, um, this will beat it. However, I think it's better to do two, three for the same purpose because if they duck, sorry, if they duck this, right, it's a lot easier to punish. But if they duck, if duck to the high, if they duck the high in this, it's very hard to punish because the mid comes out pretty fast. It will interrupt their punish, right? In most cases, especially if they're not ready for it. So I would personally just use this instead of this for the same purposes. Now, the main low option is this, right? So. Let me turn off Gardel. So this would be like the main low option out of the punish, right? So this trips them and it gives a free 4 for 3 at the in mid screen at the, at the wall. I believe you get guaranteed down too. So if they wanna this is this is the low option that they want to be ducking, right? Because it's scary, right? Now however, all the all these options I mentioned, they can dick jab all these options. So like that kind of removes the mix-up. However, we have this so you have the one plus two. Now the one plus two, it cannot be interrupted with 10 frame jab. So like plus eight into 17 frame move, right? So you, you cannot interrupt this. And on counter hit, it gives this follow up, right? 57 damage follow up, just because he tried to interrupt the mix up. So you want to condition them to take the mix up by doing this. And when they stop like pressing against it, that is when you can start going for a bigger mix up like the sweep, or you can go for the, the safe mid, or you can go for this as a mid option as well. And when they start trying to move against these options, this is when this is, comes out, right? This is So that's kind of like the meta game behind the stance. In my opinion, it's our scariest stance because it's, you know, it has a real mix up in it and it's very accessible. As, and especially from Denver 2, it's even better because you have more plus frames to work with. You have, you have plus 12 inside the plus eight. So it becomes a lot more viable. So let's talk about the other stamps that she has. So if you condition them enough to look out for these options in the first stance, she has another, she has a second stance called Tiger and Wolf, which is accessible from the Catfoot stance, hold forward, right? So let's talk about it, right? So the one, she has a, she has the one option, which is um, plus six on block, I believe. So you see it does a lot of damage. And it's plus six and block, so it's pretty beefy mid option. Uh, it's usually used to mix up between this low, which is a low knockdown. You don't get anything guaranteed, I believe. But however, if they uh, stay on the ground, they can run up and do damage too. And if they move on the ground at all, you get four four one plus two, which is a really beefy follow up, as you can see, with twenty seven damage. And if they stay on the ground because they're afraid of that, this is when you can start doing 4 for 3, right? This is when you can start doing 4 for 3. And if they move on the ground, you do 4 for 1 plus 2. So let's talk about the other mid options that she has. So this is another option that she has. So you may you may recognize this move as, as a follow-up from this, right? So this is good because it flips over. Um, it hits ground as well. So it's a really good Oki tool. If you want a bit more rewarding damage for similar speed, personally, I would go for the 3-2. Sorry, the 
plus 9 on hit, 40 damage, it's safe on block as well. It is safe on block, and uh, 40 damage plus 9, so it's a really beefy mid option to complement the low. So if you want to get them ducking, use the low, and when they're ducking, use stuff like this, right? This is after you condition them to be like wary of the options in the first stance, so you condition them with this or whatever, right? And then when they start looking, I'm gonna block now, right? I'm gonna look out for this mix up and I'm gonna block. That's when you can sneak in the second stance and then go for it. Or if in Oki situations, when you're tech rolling into it, you can just go into the stance raw and then go into this mix up, right? Go into the stance. So that kind of concludes her stance options. I hope I explained it well. So let's get, let's move on with the video. So let's talk about her punishment quickly. She has a few options for 10 frame. However, I personally prefer 1-1 one, one or 1-2 one, if you want to go into stance mix up like what I showed you previously. So those are your two options for 10 frame, personally in my opinion. 11 frame she has back 1-2, 20th damage and plus 5. Really good for 11 frame. For 12 frame she has 4-2-4, four, 33 damage and a wall splat. And the wall splat's from really far as well. For 14 frame she has political storm. Uh, at 15 frame, she has her half kick. She has her half kick at 15 frame. At 17 frame, she has 3 2. Now, if you do the just frame version, you get blue sparks for a more damaging starter. And you can use this as a whip punisher as well, as well as the half kick and political storm. For her crouching options, she has FC Dick Jab at 10 frame, like every character. She has was signing 4 2 for a land frame. Really good damage, really good frames afterwards. So, this character is super strong punishment. At 12 frame, she has Julius FC Dumper 2. At 28 damage and a wall splat. Definitely use this near the wall. At 13 frame, she has was signing 1 4. 32 damage, wall splat. Pretty beefy. At 14 frame, she has was signing 3 2. Wall fence with 38 damage. So, especially use it near the wall. At 15 frame, she has was signing 2. Or she has half pick. It depends on the situation which one you need. But she has both. She has both options. At for delay half kicks for the stagger lows, she has delay half kick. She has a delay half kick for stagger lows. So yeah, that can, that's kind of her punishment in a nutshell. One of the best punishments in the game. Yeah, this video took a bit longer than I intended because she has a lot of moves to talk about. Her stances take a lot to cover, um, but I hope this video helped you. I hope it helped you understand the character a bit more, and then she's a bit easier than she than she looks, right? And um, she's some of the best punishment in the game. She's really good mix-ups. She's a really strong character in general. So if you like this kind of content, please leave a subscribe because I will be doing more of these for the later waifus. You know, I have Katarina, Kasumi, Josie, Alisa, Xiaoyu coming up soon. So subscribe if you like this kind of content and watch my old ones as well. Thank you so much for watching.